intervention. Um, no weapon formed against thee shall prosper. Every tongue that shall rise up against thee, uh, thou shalt rise up against it in judgment, and, and thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. And it says, and their righteousness is of me. Now, I've taught 10 lessons on righteousness. Righteousness is God's moral stamp. We cannot live up to his code. We cannot live up to his law on our own. Jesus came, and according to Galatians 3, 13 to 16, he came and became the curse for us. According to 2 Corinthians 5, 21, he came and became sin for us who knew no sin, that we might become the righteousness of God. So this is, this is God's moral staff, because the Bible uh, declares that he rules with a staff of rightness. And he goes on to say another scripture, he rules it with a staff of righteousness. His holiness, his integrity, his moral uh, perfection, go ahead of us and fight for us as we identify with his finished works in our life. And he gives us everything that we need and more to succeed in every avenue of our life. Isn't that wonderful? Every avenue of our life. Thank you, Jesus. That is so awesome. Um, let's see what I want to do here. Uh, go back to Galatians real quick. Let's go back to Galatians chapter 3. And uh, let's just pick it up about verse uh, let's say 13 to 16. Let's pick it up again. I quoted it real fast, so I'm going to look it up. There's something, there's a golden nugget there that I want to pick up before we move on here in Galatians. 3, 13 to 16. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. Now, if you want to find out what the curse is, just go to Leviticus chapter uh, 26 and go to uh, Deuteronomy chapter 28. You'll find out what the curse is. There, there's, there's a bunch of curses that it basically covers every sector of life. Now, the blessing covers every sector of life as well. But Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming, he actually became the curse, becoming a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. He redeemed us. Look at this now. He redeemed us in order that the blessing given to Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Christ Jesus so that by faith we might receive the promise of the Spirit. So we're connected to the blessing of Abraham through Christ by the Spirit, and we get that by faith. We receive Christ in by faith, and we receive the Holy Spirit in by faith. Isn't that lovely? I think that's remarkable. It just, it's a mind blower, really. The way God has set us up. And you know, 2 Corinthians 8, 9 says, For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. How many know that grace works right along with faith? Without grace, we wouldn't be able to work faith. But grace wouldn't go anywhere if faith didn't take it somewhere. So they both work together in tandem. So it says here in 2 Corinthians 8, 9, For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that through his poverty you might become rich. Through his poverty you might become rich. Everybody say, I am rich. I'm rich. Now this getting barely by anointing has got to leave. Just barely getting by anointing has got to go in the name of Jesus. We rebuke it. We command it to come out of people's souls and bodies today. Just getting by anointing will not serve God well. 
Amen. And I'm calling in the freshness of financial freedom in this place right now. The freshness of financial freedom. Everybody say freedom. Thank you, Jesus. God has chosen for us to walk in ordained prosperity. And prosperity means everything. Prosperity means deliverance. Prosperity means salvation. Prosperity means healing. Prosperity means deliverance. Prosperity means prosperity. It means financial uh, enablement. Now, if you go to, um, and again, God chooses us to walk in ordained prosperity. If you go to Ephesians, um, the first chapter with me, and go to the third verse, I want to show you something. Because it's important. This is like a component, a key block in the building of the expansion of the goodness that God has for us in our life. It's a key block. It's a key building uh, set. Uh, or, uh, or it, it's really a requirement to know this. In the New King James Version, let's just go to the King James Version. In Ephesians 1 3, it said, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. How many know that? Christ has a father. The father doesn't get much credit. He doesn't get much attention. He's behind the scenes. But how many know he, he's, he's in charge of it all? The father is in charge of it all. Jesus said uh, when the disciples asked him to teach them how to pray, he said, pray our father. Right? So the father of Jesus is our father. But it said, blessed be the God and Father. So our Father's blessed. Everybody say, our Father's blessed. Uh, our father blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us. <coughs> Look at that. Look at that past tense. He hath blessed us. We've already been blessed. We're already rich. Who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Father. Blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Isn't that something? I think it's amazing. And let me go, you know, that, that just uh, just turns my my mind to something real quick and I want to go back and, uh, and let me see here if I can just pull it up the word of God will get you where you want to go the word of God will get you where you want to go A person has never gotten to the place they need to be unless the Holy Spirit takes them. Hello? A person has never gotten to the place that they need to be unless the Holy Spirit takes them there. You believe that? Yes, Um, in, in 2 Corinthians, and I quoted it a little bit earlier, and we'll go to this because I think it's important. Um, in verse 17, it says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, if any man be in Christ, everybody say men and women can be in Christ. Isn't that a phenomenal thing that we could be here right now as men and women? And we could be in a spiritual Christ. That is miraculous just in itself. The fact that we can be one with a Christ and we're human beings. If any man therefore be in Christ, he is a new creature. Everybody say we are new creations. He is a new creature. Old things have passed away. And behold, all things are become Brand new. Isn't that amazing? And then it says in verse 18, All things are of God who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ 
and has given the ministry to us of reconciliation. And then drop down to verse 21. At the end of this chapter, it says, For he hath made him to be sin for us. Now that is vintage. He actually made him to be sin for us. He became the curse and he made him to be sin. Who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. That we might be made the righteousness of God in him. We are the righteousness of God in Christ. He qualified us by becoming the curse and, and becoming sin. And he's, he's, he switched the whole process and he's put us in his righteousness miraculously. And now we can flow in his righteousness and basically have anything that we want in life. Isn't that amazing? You know, Jeremiah 29 and 11. For I know the plans. Everybody say, God's got plans. Now, he didn't say, I've got a plan. He said, I've got plural. I've got plans for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you. You mean he's got plans to prosper me? He's got several ways to do it, and God's up to something because he is moving behind the scenes in his divine knowledge and wisdom and understanding to actually work in our framework, in our firmware. And he's actually working the process to bring us into prosperity. Those plans are at work right now. We're sitting here as we're watching on Facebook. They're working for us. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. How many know our future is being worked out for us right now? Hallelujah. Glory to God. You know, I've come here tonight to get us out of that stuckness that we might find ourselves that stuckness that we might find ourselves where we just can't seem to find the way into what we have been talking about. It takes the anointing of the spirit of truth to pull one out of the stuckness of themselves. It takes the anointing of the spirit of it takes the anointing of the spirit of truth to pull one out of the stuckness of themselves and to push them forward in life. To get them to where God wants them to be. And I'm praying in Jesus name. That the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Will fall fresh on you. And make your faith active. And make your faith alive. And make the word of God alive. And make, make your life come into a function. Of functionality. And reality. The way the Holy Spirit brings it. Yeah. Hallelujah. And I hear some, some, someone saying. Uh, I don't have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. Listen. God's going to teach you step by step how to get this done. Can you say amen? The Holy Spirit and the Word of God is going to teach you step by step how to get this done. That is, God's going to open up the gate of the Spirit and He's going to open up the Word of God. You know, the psalmist said, Lord, enlarge my heart, and I will run after your word. Enlarge my heart, and I will run after your word. Just because you haven't seen it, just because you haven't known it, just because it isn't a reality to you, doesn't mean God can't get it to you. Hallelujah, he is good at what he does. You know, uh, Isaac, because, you know, we just talked about we're rich already. Ephesians 1 3, we're blessed with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. Ephesians 1 3. So, I mean, we're already rich. And, and, and so, what he has to do is he has to get us functional where we can operate in what he's already done. Because, it, and for many of us, we have been. We have been just above broke and just a little over broke and, 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 and just, just barely making it for a long period of time in our lives. 
and it's hard to, for us to conceive that something better is actually there, but it is. Can you say amen? Something better is actually there for us. You know, in um, Isaiah 48, let's flip to that scripture, but Isaiah 48 and 17. This is what Yahweh, it says Yahweh in this translation. This is the TPT translation. You can say Yahweh or Yahoo. Yahoo or Yahweh, it doesn't matter to me. Yahoo and Yahweh. This is what Yahoo, your kinsman, look at this. TPT says your kinsman redeemer. How many know that God is your kinsman redeemer? Yeah. How many have some Ruthites? Do we have some Ruthites in here? Yeah, I do. Hallelujah. I mean, Naomi and Ruth. Right. <laughs> Who is going to turn back? All the sisters of Naomi turn back, right? Yeah, they turned back and went back. But Naomi said, I'm going to go with Ruth. Yeah, I'm going to go with you both. I'm going to go. Where your God is, there's my God. Where my God is, there's your God. And she found her kinsman redeemer in the field gleaning. This is what Yahweh, your kinsman redeemer, the Holy One of Israel says, I am Yahweh, your God. I am the one who teaches you how to succeed. I am the one who teaches you how to succeed. Who leads you, look at this now, step by step in a way that you should go. This is the TPT translation. Who lead, I like this translation. Who leads you step by step. How many know there are steps to this process? There are steps to the process. Don't get impatient with yourself and don't get impatient with God because God's leading you and teaching you step by step all along the way and he wants you to succeed. How many know that God wants you to succeed? Everybody say, God wants me to succeed. What good would it do for God to procure all that he procured in his son and then just leave it hanging there? Just leave it sitting there and not get anybody to it. God's got to train us and teach us. If we're teachable, we're reachable. If we're teachable, we're reachable, right? But it, what, what does teachable mean? Teachable means, now teachable is not just taking good notes, although it's good to take notes. And teachable is not just being good with your iPad or your smartphone and recording the message. Teachable means you are going to take what you hear and you are going to apply it to life. That's what teachable means. You can have all kinds of theories, and you can have all kinds of um, uh, methods in your mind. You can have all kinds of uh, circulars running through your brain, and all kinds of different, you know, uh, logistics going on up there. But until you take what you have heard and put it into practice, yeah. then you're not teachable. But if you're teachable and you're willing to change, a lot of people don't want what God has because they don't want to change. Because it brings a, uh, it, it brings a feeling of uncomfortableness to us when we are, God's actually, he's, he's, he's turned our life 180 degrees. The world teaches us how to prosper one way and teaches us how to get what we're getting one way and then all of a sudden Jesus shows up and he begins to teach us another direction. He takes us another direction and teaches us another direction. And that's tough. And he loses a lot of disciples that way. Teachable is when you get instruction and you're willing to apply it. You know what, um, I was looking up 
this verse today in Psalm 119 and verse 9. It said, He sent redemption unto his people. He commanded his covenant forever. He sent redemption unto his people, commanded his covenant forever. Holy and reverent and hallowed is his name. He has a forever covenant. It's going to take a little bit of tweaking to get us turned around. To get into that forever mode where we're flowing with the eternal God. Think about it. God is wealthy beyond our imaginations, beyond our, beyond our comprehension. He's, he's that rich. And in order to get us where we can flow with him, he's got to do things discipline us. He's got to get us to focus. He's got to get us to apply what he teaches. And the Bible says that he's going to watch us and counsel us with his eye upon us. He's going to be right there with us. Is that Isaiah 42, 8? Oh, Psalm 32, 8. Let's, let's pull to that right now because I think that's important too. And verse 8. Let's pull that up. Thank you, Jesus. In the Amplified Bible. He said, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you. Remember in, remember in, uh, remember in high school uh, when you got caught or on something, or maybe maybe you weren't like me. Anyway, you had to go into the counselor's office. Maybe maybe at the end when you were thinking about going to the university, you had to go in the counselor's office, and the, the counselor came up with a plan for you to get you to university. And there were certain subjects that you had to take, and you had to figure out what it was, and college prep work, and those types of things. He was your counselor. He counseled you. Um, and here he says, I will counsel you, those who are willing to learn. Those who are willing to learn, it says in the Amplified Bible, with my eye upon you. Wow. God's watching. Everybody say, God's watching. God is not only teaching, he's watching. He's counseling. He's the greatest counselor in the world. I'd rather be on the couch of the Holy Ghost. I'd rather be on the couch of the Holy Ghost who was our counselor than to be on any psychiatric couch in the world. Seriously, I would rather be on the couch of the Holy Ghost. Amen. But he's going to teach us. He's going to show us what to do. And look what it says in Psalm 37 verse 34, it says, hope in the Lord, keep his way. He will exalt you to inherit the land. And when the wicked are destroyed, you will see it. He will keep us in his way. And he will exalt us to inherit the land. Isn't that amazing that the promises that God has one after the other about what he can do for us or what he wants to do for us. Um, and so what we have to do, and here's what we have to learn. We have to learn how to operate out of nothing. We have to learn how to function out of ground zero. Remember Isaac sowed in famine. He wouldn't, God wouldn't let him go. He sowed in famine for one straight year. But his obedience brought him a hundredfold return. And then the Bible says he waxed, what was that, uh, Genesis 26? The Bible says that he, he waxed greater or he became rich. And then it says, and he and he, he even waxed greater and greater, or he became very rich. Very rich. See, God's got to get us through the needle. 
He's got to get our lives through the needle. Get, can he threat? Listen, here's, here's the thing. In order for God to give you the inheritance that he has for you and it not destroy you, as I said yesterday, he has got to challenge you with stewardship. He's got to train you to be a steward. Steward to trust you with nothing to get you to everything. He's got to bring you through the window or the corridor of nothing where you're not trusting in the arm of the flesh, where you're not trusting in yourself, where you're not trusting in the world, you're not trusting in the old system that got you nowhere. He's trying to get you to distrust those things that have no functionality in your life so that you can adhere and trust to and glue to the real fortune that he has laid up for you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You know, Jeremiah 17. Let's go there real quick. Jeremiah 17. I don't know how long I've been on. How long have I been on? Yeah, man. In Jeremiah... Yeah, I got to be careful, man. The word just flows, you know. The word flows like a, it just flows like a, yeah, like living water. It just it flows like a river. It, it flows like a, like a concert. It just flows. It just goes. It flows. Hallelujah. And that's the thing about, you can't get this thing by head knowledge. You're never going to be able to appropriate this by going to school in class alone. This isn't something you can just go down to the bookstore and buy a book and then all of a sudden turn into a financial wizard. You would want to be a wizard anyway. <laughs> but this is something that you've got to work with God and it's got to be revealed. It's got to be revealed to the heart, not the head. It's got to be revealed to the heart and then the heart has to set up orders to renew the head. To be revealed is to walk in revelation. This thing, wealth in God, doesn't come by head knowledge. It comes by heart revelation. It comes by walking by faith and not by sight. Hallelujah! Just because you're doing without doesn't mean you're broke. God is trying to shake you loose of your fixity and your adherence to the fear that comes from not seeing something right in front of you. He wants you to walk in his spiritual walk. His words are spirit and life. He wants you to walk in the tangible spirit, in the eternal, in the immortal. He's got to change the tempo and he's got to change the pattern. And the way he does that is sometimes he puts us in cold, dead places where it's not fun to be. There's no worries when you're in drought. Ask Isaac. There's no worries when you're in drought. When you're in drought, when, when you can't see anything around you, that's the time to praise God. That's time to worship God. He wants you to pass that class. He wants you to pass that test. Yeah. Just lift up your hands and throw them up in the air and say, Thank God that I'm rich. Thank God that I'm wealthy. Thank God how he brought me to this place. This is a learning station for me. This is another lesson that he's teaching me. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pass this lesson with flying colors. I'm going to lift up my hands and lift up my hearts. And I'm going to praise the living God for bringing me here. There's no worries there. You know, Jeremiah 17, it's in verse 5, it says, this is what the Lord says, cursed is the one who trusts in man, who draws strength from mere flesh, whose hearts turn away from the Lord. See, that, that's where the turn away factor factors in with a lot of people. They turn away from God at that point. We, they get deaf ears and they become blind at that point. They don't want to see any more that God has to say because they're out in the wilderness and they don't have any familiar surroundings around them, and things are feeling a little bit, uh, you know, airy, you know, a little bit heated up. It just, you know, 
the emotions are on broil a little bit. You know, the mind is a little bit confused, disoriented. And, and, and that's where people get hung up. But God's trying to get us over that wilderness experience because he's taking us someplace. How I many know that God's taking us somewhere? He's taking us to Canaan land, to Beulah land. He's taking us to the blessed land. He's taking a land of good and plenty. He's taking us to a land where there is no want, there is no need there. He's taking us to a place where there is supplence and, and opulence. He's taking us to the high life. He's taking us to a life where there's no stress, strain, or strife. He's taking us to Beulah land and married land. Taking us to the place where we're merged with Christ and we no longer have to worry about anything that is deficient. You know, who draw strength from men uh, in mere flesh, uh, Jeremiah 17, 5, and whose heart turns away from the Lord, that person will be like a bush in the wastelands. Look at this. Now look, that person will be like a bush in the wasteland. See, the wastelands. We got to get through this wasteland experience. Do not let. See, if you don't pass the test, then you got to go back and take it over again. Then over again, and I, you know how many years that children of Israel walked in the wilderness for forty years, because they didn't want to move on, they didn't want to progress, they didn't want to learn, they didn't want to hear what God has to say, because they they let the outward condition be God and beguile them. The person will be like a bush in the wastelands; they will not see when. It, Prosperity comes. I was jumping up and down today. Jumping up and down today. Because I said, you know what? When things look the bleakest, and I am the weakest, that's when God is going to let me pass the test and give me his best. Come on, give God some praise. When things look bleakest, and I'm the weakest, jump up and down for joy. Because that's when God's going to give us his best and we're going to pass the test. How do you just jump up and down for joy? Click your heels and praise the living God. It's time to break out the praise. Yes, Hallelujah. They will dwell in parched places of the desert. They'll dwell there. It said if, if, if prosperity comes, they won't see it. They will dwell in parched places of the desert. That's where you're going to live. Parched places. In a salt land where no one look, no one lives. But in verse seven it says, "Blessed is the one who trusts the Lord, whose confidence is in Him." They will be like a tree planted by the water that sends out roots by the stream. It does not fear when He comes. Its leaves are always green. It has no worries in the year of drought. No worries. Look what it says. Year of drought. And never fails to bear fruit. Never fails. It is a fail safe thing. You will produce fruit. Hallelujah. You know it says you'll be without friends. You'll be about friends. When you don't have money, you're, you don't have many friends. Or not many friends that could do you any good. You know, it says it in the Bible. I, 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 I don't just say off the top of my head. Uh, wealth adds many friends, it says. But a poor man is separated from his friends. That's Proverbs 19.4. Proverbs 19.6. Many will entreat the favor of a generous man, and every man is a friend to him that gives gifts. We don't have anything to give. We can't be very generous, can we? We can't give many gifts. But if you want to have a lot of friends, let God take you where he wants you to go. He won't take you to the salt lands. Oh, I love that. So just let God teach you. Let him instruct you. Not with just padded paper. Not with just good notes, but apply the faith you have with the word instruction that the Holy Ghost gives. 
apply your faith to the word instruction that the Holy Ghost gives. Well, that sounds good. And, and here's the thing about instruction. And we say that guy, God is, is watching over us and he's counseling us with his eye and he's making sure that we understand step by step what he wants us to do. This is a partnership. You're not in this alone. God is training you and teaching you to walk with him. He's going to walk with you in this thing. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Prosperity is partnership with God. The only thing that can defeat the devil in your life is God. And your connection to God is the only thing. With God, all things are possible. With man, they're not possible. The weapons of warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through the pulling down of strongholds. We cannot defeat the devil on thinking ground. We have to defeat the devil by revelation. Yeah. Isn't it Matthew 16 where he says I will, uh, to Peter, I will build my church. Who, 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 do, who do men say that I am? And who do you say that I am? And he says, you're the Christ. You're the son of God. And he said, well, flesh and blood hasn't revealed this to you. But my heavenly father has revealed this to you. It's revelation, knowledge, and knowing and he said, and the gates of hell will not be able to stop you because you're in partnership with God. You're, you're together with God. You're one with God. And there's no way that hardship, there's no way that lack, liability, loss, limitation can hold you down any longer. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Woo, thank you, Jesus. That's why he's teaching. He's not teaching you to take something. right. He's teaching you so you can work with him and walk with him. He's taking it so you can go with him into the places that he has prepared for us. Glory to God for you and I. And, you know, please, please study my message from yesterday. It talks about the seed. Kingdom is kingdom was made to operate by seed. The way everything is going to be directed to you in life now since you're in the kingdom of God, is going to be by the initiation and sowing of seed. Because when you do that, the wealth is going to find you. It's going to, it's going to locate you. It's going to track you because the seed sends out a homing device that lets God know that you did it. And so what you're doing is you're pulling in the harvest to your location, to your locale. It's coming to you. It's got a homing device in it. God knows who sows seed. Amen. Oh, my God. Give the Lord a, somebody give the Lord a hand clap. Say amen. Amen. You, you, can't, you can't live this for someone else. You can't look around and see who's sowing what. It doesn't make any difference what they're sowing. We're looking at you and your life. And God is watching you. He's training you. He's the one that is teaching you. Jesus is a seed trainer. The Apostle Paul is a seed trainer. Abraham was a seed trainer. Noah was a seed trainer. Many people, they're looking for a breakthrough. What are you looking for a breakthrough for? What's the breakthrough for? What, so you can get a little bit of money and, and, and pay a bill? What's the breakthrough for? You, you've been not doing so well and you want to get more freedom in the Lord or something. You know, what's the breakthrough for? My idea of breakthrough is not to end up where we already are in a better way. Not to end up where we already are in a, in, a, in a better way. That's not my idea of breakthrough. My idea of breakthrough is breaking through to the next level. 
getting what God has already designed for us for a lifestyle change. Come on, getting what God already has for us for a lifestyle change. That's what I call a breakthrough. Glory to God. When you get to the place where money doesn't move you, money will move for you. Let me say that again. When you get to the place where money does not move you, money will move for you. God is the one that controls the processes of wealth generation. God controls the purse strings. He's the one that he is the master conductor. Uh, you know, and, and again, you know, if you're going to argue about semantics and you want to argue about this and that, but look, I'm not in an argument of mood. I don't argue religion or politics. I don't argue it. If you, you know, teach his own, whatever you want to do. But when it comes to the truth of the word of God, when it comes to the word, I don't, I'm not going to back up on it. I'm just going to follow. I'm going to follow what the word says. I'm going to do what the word says to do. I'm just going to let God instruct me. You know, uh, 1 Corinthians 3.21 in the Amplified Bible, it says, it, and this goes along with Ephesians 1.3 that I just read. It, it says in, in, in 1 Corinthians 3.21, it says, so in verse 2, it says, so let no man, no one, no one boast in man. So let no one boast in men about their wisdom or having this or that as a leader. Now look what he says here at the bottom. What does he say at the last part of that verse? All things are yours. All things are yours. All things are yours. It's already yours. It's already yours. We're not trying to get to something that we don't have. We are working to get to something we already possess. We already possess it. It's ours already. Hallelujah. Prosperity is our birthright. Prosperity is our blood right. You know, and God owns it all. Come on. God owns it all. You know, Psalm 24 says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The world and all those who dwell in it. I guess I'll give you one more scripture. I'm going to close it. I could go on for another hour, but I'm not going to do that. Uh, well, I'll be more teaching this week. I'll be, te I'll, I'll be sending out lessons this week. How many received some of those audio lessons that we're sending out? How many are actually listening to some of those audio lessons? Uh, you know, because I check, I check on YouTube. I can tell how many people have actually watched them. They're not too many. But sometimes there are. Like the other day, I sent one. There was a lot of people that watched it. But, you know, it's there for the watching. It's there. You can take advantage of it just by, by opening up the lessons on your smart smartphone. Now, if you do not have your number on our audio send out list, then... Uh, Come and get the pad, or let's pass that pad around. Put your name and your and your cell phone number on it, and I'll send you audios. These are life-saving lessons. These are things that are saving my life, and I'm sending it out to you. Not everybody's got. What? How many pastors do you know are going to do that? How many people do that? How many pastors do that? I don't know. I'm not trying to compare myself. Who have even interest to get you more help? You know, I want to be in revival every day. I'm in revival every day. But let's go to this last this last part here. I didn't teach too much about the seed tonight, but I taught more about the process. About how God is working and how he's, he's, he's regulating things and how he's administrating things. And how he's getting you to where you need to go. Um, the steps of a good man are what? Ordered by the Lord, and he obtaineth the favor of the Lord. Man, I want you to be that student in the front seat in front of the teacher that has that apple shined up and ready to give the instructor. 
I want you to be at the front of the class. And I want you to get everything God has for you in his first class anointing. Everybody say God has a first class anointing. I want you to have everything God has for you in the lifestyle change. To live the high life. To live the God kind of a life. To have the, live life the way God lives it right now. God wants you and I to live the life that he is living right now. That's what it's all about. As it is in heaven, so let it be in the earth. He wants you to be unified with him. So that the life that he is enjoying, you can enjoy it as well. My God, no wonder the devil fights it. No wonder the devil's disturbed. No wonder the devil's upset. No wonder the devil doesn't get it. Amen. Doesn't want us to have it either. This is my last scripture, Luke, uh, Baptist verses here, Luke 15. Uh, is it Luke 15? I guess it is. And he said to his father, look, in verse 29, said to his father, look, these many years I've been, I've served you and I've never neglected to, or disobeyed your command. Isn't that something? I've never neglected or disobeyed your command. We've got some good people out here. we got some good people out here. And we got some good people out there. And thank God you're living a holy life. Thank God you love the Holy Ghost. Thank God you love the Word. Thank God you're children of God. Thank God that, that you're just, it's amazing who you are. I've never neglected or disobeyed your command. Yet you have never given me as much as a young goat. So that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this other son of yours has arrived. Don't even call his name. When this other son of yours has arrived. Who has devoured your estate with immoral women. Prostitutes. You slaughtered the fatted calf. The fatted one. The big one. The fat one over there. It's all beefed up, ready to go. The father said to him, son, you're always with me. Always. And all that is mine is yours. All that is mine is yours. It was fitting to celebrate and rejoice for this brother of yours was as good as dead. And he's begun to live again. He was lost. But now he has been found. The brother was in lost and found. A lot of Christians. Live. And you know the story of Lazarus. Uh, Leroy Thompson taught me, taught me, went over this the other day. Uh, uh, my kind of spiritual guru, or you might say, spiritual teacher uh, in things of, uh, in terms of wealth. He's he's a multi multi millionaire. He, he, money cometh, man. I'm on his wall at his office. He got me posted on his wall in his office. He intercedes over over me and this church. Did you know that? Yeah. That multi-millionaire that got it from God, got spiritually got wealthy from God, sowing out of distress most of the time. You know, in order for him to turn around, he had to sow when his car broke down. Instead of uh, instead of fixing the car, he, he he made it into a seed and sowed it to God. Yeah, when he wanted something new, he didn't go put a down payment on it. He went and sowed a large seed to God. And called it in God's way. Say, God, you make the arrangements. He did things. And he had to find ways to get money to sow to God. So he can get his life turned around. That's the story of his life. He looked for ways to get money. So that he could be a seed sower. Uh, but anyway, he was talking about uh, Lazarus. And the rich man. And you know, I, I, how many know that story already? How many know? I, I said that was going to be my last scripture. Here I am telling you something that's not even true. Jesus' name. 
my, my, my. You know, verse 10 of, of what, what chapter is this anyway? This is uh, Luke 16 and verse 10. It says, um, he that is faithful in a very little thing is also faithful in much. He who is dishonest in very little things also is dishonest in much. Therefore, if you have not been faithful in the use of earthly wealth, who will trust you with true riches? I'm trying to get us to true riches. True riches, the money that we have to sow, that is just earthly money, earthly wealth. God wants to take that earthly wealth and he wants to transport it and change it into eternal wealth. Hallelujah. All right, here we are in verse 19. It says, now there was a certain rich man who was habitually dressed in expensive purple and fine linen. And celebrated, lived joyously in splendor every day. Isn't that nice? And a poor man named Lazarus was laid at the gate covered with sores. And he eagerly longed to eat the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Beside even the dogs were coming and licking his sores. The dogs were licking his sores. Look at that. Now it happened that this poor man died. And look at this. His spirit was carried by angels. Oh, I love that, don't you? His spirit was carried by angels. That's how we're going to get out of here. His spirit was carried by angels to Abraham's bosom. Or in, in this translation, it says paradise. See, we're seeds of Abraham. God's just trying to get us to paradise. Woo! He looked up. And so anyway, it says, uh, the angels carried to, uh, to Abraham's bosom, and the rich man also died, and he was buried. And in Hades, the realm of the dead, being in torment, he looked up and saw Abraham far away and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried out, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus so that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue because I am in severe agony in this flame. But Abraham said, son, remember that in your lifetime you received good things and all the comforts and delights and Lazarus likewise bad things and all the discomforts and distresses, but now he is comforted in paradise while you are in severe agony. Now, I'm not trying to point out the fact that, you know, a, a hellfire and brimstone. I'm not trying to, you know, put you in the flame so you can feel uncomfortable if you, if you go that way. But what I'm trying to get across is that Lazarus represents people in the church. That live way beneath their privileges. Jesus told that Canaanite woman. That you don't even belong here. This bread that I'm passing out doesn't belong to you. You're a Canaanite woman. But she said well even the dogs eat from under your table. Called her you know. It, it, she was. But what I'm trying to say is that. We have this veneer over us where we think that we have to live on crumbs. Yeah. And we're going to be so sorry if we don't switch gears and flip the switch and yeah. get out of the stuckness of ourselves, pass these tests and move on with God and let's get going with the thing. Yeah. Let's move up to a higher octave. Yeah. Let's move up to a higher level. Let's move up to the place that God has called us. Let's get there. Let's do what he's told us to do and be who yeah. he told us to be and have what he said we could have. You're a born again believer. You think that he wanted you to have meager a little bit and yeah. just, just enough. You're born again. Yeah. You're bought with the blood. You've been ransomed by the son of God. You're a co-heir with Jesus Christ. An heir of Almighty God. Come on, clap your hands and say amen, somebody.
Glory to God. All right, let's let's close it off. I'm gonna close it off here. Uh, I don't know. Just, you just have to blame me because I'm just absorbed in the word these days, just flowing in it, just moving in it. I'm on it and in it and with it, by it and through it. Amen. Yeah, Mario on. Uh, uh, Quincy Shed. God bless you, Sammy. Uh, uh, the Master, Peggy Morris, Pamela. God bless you. Uh, Cindy Coates, Priscilla Chambers, Cynthia McGinnis. Cynthia McGinnis from Canton, Ohio. God bless her. Robin Thompson. And Mishan Moe. Well, that's a Makin Boko Shabaha. I'm praying about your situation, Mishan. About the timing and the whole thing. Yeah. And Cheryl Sing uh, Singletary. We have a lot of people watching. But you know what? God can get you to the next level, but he's got to get you to apply what you have learned. Apply what you have learned. Sow seeds. When God's talking about stewardship, he's talking about sowing seeds. He's talking about getting to the next level. He's talking about teaching you not to trust in man and not to trust in the world money, but to trust in the kingdom money and trust in the power of the seed. Then the thing to do is just to get up and sow. Doesn't take that much initiative or not much unction understanding to know that that's the next step. Uh, go to you know go download Zell on your on your smartphone and then um, uh, it's one of the one of the applications of the major blanks banks blanks yeah major blanks compared to God God's eternally wealthy major blanks. <laughs> Woo! Hallelujah. God's taking my mouth to the next level. Huh? <laughs> Enter 469 335 3356. 469 335 3356. Or go to, just send it to the uh, P.O. Box. P.O. Box 271636, Dallas, Texas 75227. And just uh, put Dallas Revival Center in the top. Um, if you sew checks, money orders. Uh, put U-A-W-O-M-I on it. U-A-W-O-M-I. U-A-W-O-M-I. If you want to text in your seed, text 833-589-2618. 833-589-2618. Enter the word give, and they'll send you a platform to give by credit card, debit card, American Express, Discover, Visa, MasterCard, and every kind of a card. And you'll, you know, you'll get... And if you want to do PayPal, just go to DallasRevivalCenter.com. There's a donate button that's connected to PayPal. If you want to go to want to go want to sow it over Facebook, go to the Messenger, click on the uh, money icon, and you can send it that way. There's so many ways to get seed in the ground. I mean, it used to be I could, you know, in the old days, thousands of years ago, they couldn't get to church but three times a year because they lived far away. They had to make trips. They didn't have a convocation. They had to have a week church just to catch up but today my god we could sit at home we could be sitting on top of the empire state building or sitting down here in downtown dallas uh in a park somewhere we, we could fire away we could participate immediately it's just so easy just let your thumb let your fingers do the walking and let your seed do the talking can you say amen? hallelujah glory to god that's it Whew, hallelujah all right Bye bye for now. Click the like button. Click, 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 click the like button and the share button, and then uh, so that you care. And God will make you a multi-millionaire in Jesus. Name. Woo, hallelujah! <laughs> Woo, glory to God.